Let's talk more about all the issues uh, concerned here. Our guest is uh, Rula Jabriel, member of President Macron's Gender Equality Advisory Council for the G7 and professor of communication at the University of Miami. Rula, thank you much for being with us. You've spoken at uh, the event today. I mean, tell us your impressions. Tell us why this is important. Tell us of your experience. It's, it's crucial. I mean, we're, t we're looking at a reality where uh, social media platform that were meant to connect us is actually dividing us. Mm -hmm. It's uh, becoming uh, the most powerful instrument of radicalization of the 21st century. It's de facto a handmaid of authoritarianism. Uh, people are dying because of inaction of these companies and unwilling to reform. Not only that, some of these companies that were sitting today, and it was so disappointing, as much as was thrilled to see ministers of the G7 really taking on the issue of hate speech, of cyberbullying, of cyber attacks, of revenge porn, they were really proactive and they're willing to reform. These companies were deflecting, denying, and basically dismissing the whole issue. It's like, yeah, somebody else is using these platforms. It's not our fault. This is what they want. This is what the people want. Denying the fact that actually they are not only complicit, they are selling to people who we don't know, Facebook ads, they are profiling people politically to better target them with ads. And then you have massacres like what happened in New Zealand, and then they shrug their shoulders. I'm like, well, yeah, tough luck, things happen. We need to hold them to account. We need more transparency. And I don't think we are doing enough. We are not pushing back enough. Um, Facebook saying they will um, keep terrorists, so anybody who talks terrorism, off the site for off streaming live for 30 days. Uh, 30 that, days? That, that seems, that, that I mean, seems rather weak. this is ridiculous. I mean, look, but remember, Mark Zuckerberg is the man that went, uh, basically sent an email out saying, what's good for Facebook might not be good for the world. Meaning, I don't care about democracy. I don't care about people's lives. I care about profit. I care about, I mean, one of the people who are sitting representing Facebook today was a UK minister. So he's bankrolling politicians to do his, to whitewash his crimes. What's happening is illicitly harvesting profiles, is illicitly using uh, and, and, and being abused by extremists on the right who are killing people in synagogues, in mosques, in churches, shooting children in schools. If you look at, for example, two episodes, when they did the massacre in, in Parkland, mm. in Florida, if you Google survivors Im, or you put on YouTube survivor, the name of survivors, immediately it will reroute you to another websites where you have conspiracy theories, where you have lies, propaganda, hate speech, and it's skyrocketing. And then we discover that there's an algorithm that basically rerouting people towards these hate content. They're, it's a crime scene, and they're complicit in that, and they're how, doing nothing about it. How disappointed, and I, I think I, I sense the, the answer coming straight away, how disappointed are you that the United States will not be signing up to this Christchurch call as launched by President Macron and Prime Minister Arden? To be honest, it's, I'm not surprised. Uh, I was one of the few people who predicted Trump victory, and I predicted what's coming after it. Uh, he cannot distance himself from the people he... You know, people ask me all the time, is, is President Trump a racist? Is President Trump a white supremacist? Uh, I will answer with what Gillum, uh, the governor or, or a candidate governor, answered. I don't know if he is, but I know that the racists think he is a racist. I know the white supremacists think that he's a white supremacist. And I know that neo-Nazi, who he defended hours after they murdered a woman in Charlottesville, mm. uh, Heather Heyer, I think they think he is one of them. He talked and he's about, enabling he talked about, them he talked and about good them. people being so, on both sides, didn't he? And obviously very clearly, fine yeah. people on yeah. both sides after they murder uh, uh, an American citizen, after they massacred people in churches, in mosques. Facebook and these platforms are basically uh, selling us and serving us propaganda, conspiracy theory, anti Semitism. Mark Islamophobia. Zuckerberg was in Paris last week. Um, Nothing seems to have advanced on that one. The, the, the images of, of Macron and Zuckerberg together it looked like they weren't actually talking, which is obviously not a great situation. Is the solution, Ruler, to, to, to censor Facebook, to close things down? I mean, basically no, mess with no. people's f liberty of expression? No, no. It's, it's more transparency on Facebook. Look, the, United, the, the European Parliament called platforms cyber gangsters. Mm. What's happening is, is they are 
complicit in crimes. They actually, not only complicit in crimes, they refuse to tell us who is buying these Facebook ads, who is promoting them. This dark money, where does it come from? Are they European citizens, no European citizens? I mean, we have the elections in two weeks. What's yeah. going to happen with that? Are we looking at what's happening online in terms of hate, fear, propaganda, conspiracy theory, anti-Semitism? We don't know anything about that. And they're refusing to give us the answers. We must demand answers now. More transparency, more accountability. And hit them where it hurts, in their pocketbooks. But in terms of what that will mean for social media and people's use of that, is this basically the issue that you, know, you, you need to sort of control what they do? Look, if, if you have people threatening you, you, can't you just and let I people say what they want. Threats. I know. receive death threats basically every time on television uh, mm. because some people don't like what I say, whatever. But we notice something that's very clear. Some people are targeted intentionally. For example, mm. you have George Soros. We discovered that mm. Facebook itself hired a company to directly and indirectly target him with, with anti-Semitic content. People are dying because of these actions and because of these, these, this kind of behaviors. It's time to stop this and it's time to demand from these companies. I think it's, it's time to overregulate them. Nobody wants to censor, but we want to save people's lives. We have a responsibility to protect our citizens. We have a responsibility to save children who are being bullied, who are being attacked, killed. Death by suicide mm. is skyrocketing because people are abused. Hearing that completely. And in terms of live streaming, would you stop it quickly? Yes or no? Live streaming, stop it. Yes or no? Because you wouldn't I give wouldn't anybody stop that, a license but just to for broadcast example, live. Facebook and, and all of these companies have to create softwares in order to detect in, in timely fashion if there's a horrific content online, mm -hmm. murder, blood, uh, 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 killing, massacres. You have to detect it exactly like they create software to, to galvanize people mm -hmm. to watch the most horrific content. Why don't we create software to basically prevent, halt, slow down? And that is uh, definitely food for thought. Rula, thank you very much thank indeed. You for Rula Jebrail, who is uh, working on behalf of uh, President Macron alongside the G7 on this issue. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and your analysis. We appreciate your time. Thank you for thank having me.